Hello, uh, my name is Uther Dean. I am a, a writer and performer sometimes of uh, so storytelling or, uh, or solo shows. Um, I, I've made three big ones over uh, since about 2014. 2014, me and my friend Dr. Hannah Banks, um, we run with Paul Wag at the theatre company My Accomplice, and for the New Zealand Fringe Festival 2014, we put on a show called Everything is Surrounded by Water, uh, which was a storytelling show where I told a story just like this, seemingly, seemingly extemporaneously, just, you know, to an audience. Um, uh, it started off in people's homes and was kind of about losing souls as metaphors for sadness and then i wrote uh um i i say i wrote uh, uh i conceived and performed uh, another one in the comedy festival of 2015 in wellington auckland called a public airing of grievances which was a show that started seemingly as you know kind of standard comedian uh sequence of disconnected jokes and then revealed those jokes to be kind of points in a narrative constellation that I'd been telling in a non-linear style over the whole show. It was very uh, smart. Not many people saw it, but it was it was good. Um, and then a show called Youth Dean Reads 300 Haiku, which was precisely what it sounds like, which was a show that came out of me reflecting on the previous two storytelling shows and mistakes I'd made while making them. Uh, you ask me what my room is. I don't have a room when I'm making things. I have a, a, a brain. <laughs> I, I kind of like to pride myself on kind of being able to work and write wherever I can go. Um, and that is because I'm kind of always writing. I'm always running my mind fingers <laughs> over the ideas in my brain and seeing how they connect and how they spark and how they speak to each other uh, and often when I can't work something out about a show it's just because I haven't thought about it enough I haven't lived enough of the rest of my life I haven't gone and done the shopping and gone to the doctor and gone for you know sat and sat in the bus seen enough films or plays just got to think about the work and thinking about the work is thinking about other things and I say ideas and saying oh, like I've just got ideas seems uh, greedy um, when so many people um feel so bereft by concepts um and what i mean when i say that is that i'll always think of an idea as, as a connection between two things like everything is surrounded by water was uh, a connection between an idea which was the title everything is surrounded by water which i didn't come up with and the title uh, and uh, wanting to do a storytelling show those always kind of sat together and then wanting to do a show about mental illness that also didn't have a lot of risk attached to it because I did not want to lose lots and lots of money talking about how sad I was it would be too uh, ironic it would just destroy me uh, and so I connected those two ideas and so those four things started to talk to each other everything is surrounded by water um, the title attached to the idea started to generate theme and plot and um, then the financial situation and the storytelling revealed that we would start the show by performing it in people's living rooms. Well, we, I, performing it in people's living rooms. Um, and then after doing that and discovering how much joy I found just personally and extemporaneously talking through a story and the way we wrote that is that um, me and Hannah told the story to each other back and forth and then Hannah wrote it down into a document, which I kind of half learned, and then spoke from memory. Like you're kind of describing an article you read uh, in a newspaper or something like that. And then uh, public hearing of grievances, I was like, that's interesting, but what happens if the story is not in the right order? What if it is non-linear? And more importantly, what if you're not supposed to like me, my role in it? And that immediately brought me the idea to do it as stand-up comedy. Because stand-up comedy is the only form where the audience, even at their best, are hostile. You can leave an audience judging a comedian in a way that it is less successful to leave an audience judging a character. A hundred percent, you know? You want to feel some empathy if they're pretending. Whereas comedy, it's like, you're not pretending. Tell us something funny, you bastard. And then 300 Haiku came from me reflecting on the first two processes, seeing my mistakes in them, 
and then realizing that um, I need the way to express that is through a rigidly prescribed form. And I'd been doing the haiku practice for a long time at that point. And so those kind of naturally combine. And so the process is always like, how do the two ideas hit? How does it need to be? And like, to focus on Euthy Dean Reads 300 haiku for a moment, like, the reason it is reads is that there are moments and gestures within the story where both the speaker, it has to seem like both the audience and the speaker are encountering them for the first time. Like, that show is made weaker if um, it's something that's all... That show is made weaker if it's something that's all in my head, that I already, already know. I need to be as shocked as you are. And so, like, looking forward to my next storytelling show, which is probably going to be called um, Second Person... Like, that has huge restrictions on it, and it has, uh, that is the first one where I'm going to write it full stop, then learn it full stop, then rehearse it full stop, and, like, do choreography, and things like that, and, like, there's, from the title you can tell there's some pretty clear restrictions on the language it can use, but that doesn't come from me going, like, oh, I want to control myself, I want to put obstacles in front of myself, in front of myself, it comes from going... I have a story that I want to tell, and it can only be told this way. Because process, the way you work, the way you make a thing in any form, but especially uh, in solo performance, um, process is your first and most important dramaturgical choice. How you made a show is the biggest thread in your weave of actions. Um, and so how you... You've got to look at what you want to say, or the story you want to tell, or the feeling you want to leave the audience with, and um, work out the process that will best do that. Um, it's slightly different when I am writing a solo work for another performer, which I've done twice. Um, uh, I did The Seven Sons of Suprath. I wrote that with Paul Waggett for Paul Waggett, and then I wrote Symmetry uh, for Hannah Banks. And both of those come uh, much more from aesthetic goals. Um, and that, uh, like, Suprath, I wanted for it to be, to push at the very limits uh, of, you know, the standard one-man show playing all the characters can do. Like, what is too many characters in one scene? What is too much action? What is too much plot? Finding and tracing those contours. And then uh, Symmetry came from me wanting to see if you can make it scary, which I don't think I succeeded at, but also, what is the solo show that has to be a solo show with the conventions of a solo show? What When you take the dramaturgical conventions of solo work, the switching of character, the switching of perspective, and made them plot functions, what story occurs from that? Um, and that's just another, but those are also collisions, that's the equal thing, they come from ideas, and they connect and they feed it to each other, and so that's, process is always changing, and I'm sure that, like, I dream one day of a storytelling show, where I do all the prep, but none of the writing, where the show is put together and everything is great, and then the actual story I tell on stage is irrelevant, and changes each night, depending on what I'm feeling like. But the thing is, I haven't yet found a story or a theme or idea that wants to be told uh, that way. So yeah, that's my process. I hope that fucking makes sense. Thanks so much for having me.